RAM compatibility is luckily one of the easiest parts of choosing components for a computer as it's something which is only really dependent on the motherboard you have although it does influence a bit in terms of a couple of other aspects of your computer although I'll get onto that in a bit. So the first thing you want to be looking at is the generation of RAM you're using. This is going to be decided on the motherboard um, and it could either be DDR, DDR2, DDR3 or DDR4. The reason why you want to be choosing a particular type is that by going for a generation too early it's going to be because you've got a computer which is older. So let's say if you have DDR2 it's probably because you've got a computer which is a good 5-6 years old now. Although if you go for DDR4, it's going to be a computer which has came out in probably the last year or two. DDR3 is also rather common these days. Um, so for instance, I'm using it on my computer, but my computer, the architecture of my processor, which is what actually decides the generation of RAM, is rather old now, and therefore it's on an old generation. You can't mix and match the generation of RAM just because if you look at each individual stick on its own, you'll actually see that the slot which decides the orientation of the RAM in the motherboard be in different places and therefore you can't mix and match because it physically won't fit in the DIM on the motherboard. You can find out the generation of RAM you need by going onto the motherboard you want, going onto your specifications, and it should say there that it requires DDR3, DDR4, or something different. Moving on, the next thing you want to look at is if you need ECC RAM or non ECC RAM. Non ECC is the most common type in uh, general computers that you have in your home, whereas ECC you'll mostly have. Uh, on server grade equipment or software errors aren't really acceptable so for instance financial computing ecc ram is error correcting code uh, which will actually run and correct most common types of errors which you'll have in terms of data so if you have a cropped hard drive it will be able to stop some of the errors from actually ha happening over time because it can find them and go okay that's an error i know how to correct that and it's done if you need ECC RAM, you have to be very careful in the type of motherboard you get, as in you're looking for a high-end either workstation or server motherboard, along with particular types of CPUs. Most of them are actually made for servers, and therefore the cost of this goes up significantly. If you're after just a general purpose computer, ECC RAM is not essential. The next thing you want to be looking out for is the physical size of the sticks of RAM that you're getting. So this is going to be the width, height and length of it. And the reason why you want to be looking out for this is a compatibility with other items in your computer. So an often thing to look out for will be the CPU cooler. As a CPU cooler may go over where the dims are on the motherboard. And if it get, goes down too far, you're going to be limited in which types of RAM you can use. If you want to be safe, you can always go for low profile RAM, although going for high ones normally gives you a bit better cooling on your RAM and therefore perhaps a bit of better overclock. Um, you want to be making sure you're choosing something which is compatible and you should be able to find this out either by looking at the measurements of the CPU cooler and then try and work out yourself, or you, if you know it's something that hangs over the CPU cooler, just play safe and get some low profile RAM. It won't generally impact performance unless you are planning to overclock, in which case maybe a small bit. Next you want to be looking at the actual size, as in how much storage the RAM has. So this could be 8GB, 32GB, etc. And you want to be keeping this under or equal to the max amount that the motherboard can support. It's going to specify something such as 32GB, 128GB for some later DDR4 compatible motherboards. And how you want to be sorting this out is you want to look at how many DIMMs you have, so how many sticks of RAM you can put in your motherboard, and you want to divide the max amount of RAM you can have by how many sticks of RAM you can fit in your motherboard, and you'll then find the optimal size per stick. Of course you can go lower, and that's fine, uh, but I would recommend going for the optimal size, so let's say if you could fit 32 gigabytes, which is rather common on DDR3, you can go for four 8 gigabyte sticks, and therefore you have the optimal amount, so you've got the maximum to upgrade without replacing all the RAM you have at the moment with new RAM. Finally, there is mixing RAM. So this is more important if you're upgrading the computer. 
Um, mix and ram is definitely not recommended. And this is because either you're going to be getting stuff which is different sizes or different speeds or different brands, uh, different models, and therefore completely different specifications. And this is all going to cause errors. Um, so it could be simple blue screens and deaths, which isn't fun to try and fix. Or it could be something a lot worse. Uh, but generally, you're not going to really know until it happens what the error would be. To stay safe, instead of mixing RAM, you have to either replace all the RAM you have if you want to upgrade. Or when you're buying RAM for the first time, you want to make sure you take notes on the specifications, the brands, the model numbers. And the best thing to do is to stick to the same size, so gigabyte per stick, the brand, so stick to the exact same brand, the model, and if at all possible, the age of the RAM, as even within certain generations and models um, by companies, the specifications may change a very small amount on stick to stick, uh, just because at different uh, resources become cheaper or different resources are favorable, some may be discontinued over time. And therefore, they're going to be changing out perhaps month by month. Uh, but it's not going to be easy to find this information as the manufacturers don't specify if they change it. Uh, because the specifications overall are almost the same, if not identical. Uh, but this is something that isn't necessary. It's just it's recommended if at all possible. So that is it in terms of rank compatibility. If you have any more questions, then leave them down below. If not though, um, please like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't like it, and also put in the comments why you didn't like it, and I can perhaps change this for a future video. If you want to see more of my content, then subscribe to my channel, it will be much appreciated, and therefore you'll have all my latest videos in your description box when they're made. So thank you for watching, and goodbye.